Nine, and we are live. What's up? It's Mike Wall, and welcome to another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Super excited today. I got my man from our neighbors up north in Canada, mega agent, Mr. Brandon Town. And today we're talking about the importance of creating a good culture on your team and in your brokerage. So without further ado, welcome, Mr. Brandon Town. How are you, brother? What's up, Mike? How you doing, brother? Thanks for having me on. It's good yeah, to see dude. you. I'm stoked, man. I met a lot of great people down in Orlando, Florida at the Shareholder Summit. And, and I think one of the, 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 the most interesting people I met was, and probably one of the most focused people I met was you, man. I appreciate that. It's a, that was quite an event. Um, you know, it took a lot to get down there, but for me, it was life changing. Uh, meeting people like yourself, some other extremely high level individuals. Um, you know, it was just it was it was a great way to kick off, kick things off. Yep. And I am fortunate enough, according to you, to be, and this is going to create a good visual for everybody, to be the one who gets to pop your podcast cherry. So consider right, it pop, my friend. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited and a little nervous too. I mean, that's what it's all about though, breaking through, you know, barriers, right? To take you to the next level. So I'm here, I'm excited. So let's do this. Yeah. So why don't we do this, man? Talk, just just bring the audience up to speed um, on kind of your background. Give a, a quick like 90 second bio. Sure, I will. Um, so quickly, you know, I started off my career at a, at a big box brokerage, Century 21. Um, we didn't stay there too long. We were pretty successful early, but we ended up together leaving and starting an independent brokerage. Um, over the past four and a half to five years, uh, we built that from the basement um, to another office, to a bigger office, and uh, we, we were pretty successful. And um, we had a great team culture. We had, a, we had great training. We had, we had a nice atmosphere. Um, I have since made a change. Uh, I have left uh, that independent brokerage and pursued uh, kind of my heart and my gut for EXP Realty. And that was in within the last 10 days that I've made that change. Yep, that's awesome, brother. And we're certainly excited to have you. And, and you know, when you and I spoke um, at the Shareholder Summit and, you know, this this podcast was created really just to to try to add value back into the agent community. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of agents who struggle to get good information out there. And, and so when you and I were initially talking, we, we were, we were really, you know, we we're trying to figure out, you know, what is the best conversation that we could have um, today to really add value back into the agent community. And, you know, we, we stumbled upon this idea of, of culture, right. And, and we hear culture as a lot of times it's a buzzword um, in corporate America and even into real estate when you're creating you know, a team or building a brokerage. But the reality of culture is it, it is inherently becoming um, and not that it's never been important in the past, but it is it is. I think people are recognizing the more and more. So the importance of building a good culture. And so, you know, you've been there, right? You've been you've been at a big box brokerage. Um, you've been a part of that culture and you can speak to that. But also you've created your own culture. And I think people will get a lot from your experience, um, seeing the big box culture and, and having to build a culture from the ground floor up. So why don't you speak to that a little bit? I will. So, you know, at the big box brokers that I was, was previously at, you know, there was two or three main individuals that would consistently come to the office. There wasn't much of an in-office culture. And because of technology then, uh, there really wasn't much of a culture in general. We had, you know, the odd editing, that kind of thing. But again, too, it was mostly us creating that atmosphere at that brokerage. Um, you know, when we started in real estate, we didn't know a lot. We didn't have a lot of guidance. So we really were kind of trial and erroring almost everything that we did at that time. Uh, and one thing that we knew, though, is that we had to have a consistent culture that people wanted to be a part of mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And I, I'll use that, I'll say that word again is consistent because if you aren't consistent with your daily activities or for that reason, trying to inspire people to join your team or just inspire people in general, you're not going to have much of a culture. 
And in order to really have an uplifting culture, uh, you have to genuinely care about the people and they need to feel that. Um, if, if, if building a culture is a part of your why, um, the people that you're trying to inspire, they'll know that. Yeah. So I'm curious because, you know, there's, there's different kinds of cultures. There's a brokerage culture. There's a team culture. Um, there is, you know, big box culture. There's, um, you know, mom and pop cultures. There's all these different kinds of cultures. And really, they're all different. And maintaining them is all different. Um, you know, I think from a brokerage standpoint, it becomes increasingly more challenging as you get bigger to maintain that um, that camaraderie, that you know that that positivity when you walk into the office where people are supporting each other. And we ran into that, I think, more so at Keller Williams, um, and not that it was a Keller Williams thing by any stretch of the imagination, because I would assume that if you walk into the door of any big box brokerage, it's going to be much the same. And from what I'm hearing at Century 21, it was, you know, it was kind of the same thing. You walked into the office and it was the same, um, it was the same 10 or 15 people always in there having the same conversation about what happened on American Idol last night, right? Yeah. And typically those 10 to 15 people, if we're being honest with ourselves, they didn't represent a lot of production. Am I correct? Yeah, there, you know what? There was, for, for that specific uh, brokerage, I will give them credit, the people that were in there were actually pretty high producers. Yeah. Yeah, they were at that particular point. Sure. Um, what I will say about culture is, is yes, it's different at, at wherever, whatever you're trying to build it at a different company, it's going to be different. The biggest misconception I actually had about the current company that I'm at, EXP, is that I was very scared that we were going to lose that atmosphere, that culture mm -hmm. that I was currently a part of. Because what we had was, was pretty special. I, I thought it was definitely not normal. I don't think a lot of brokerages had what we had, but that was one of the biggest things holding me back. And so I'm going to touch on that in a little bit, but I'm going to now talk a little bit about what it takes, in my opinion, to have a very consistent culture within your business. Um, you definitely need to kick off every single day with either a morning huddle, and that can be either digitally or in person. It's super important to connect with your team uh, with a lot of energy, uh, every single day. Um, by all means, you're not going to make every single morning. Sometimes things come up, but it's very important to have that. Have a have a lot of music. Have access to music, and kick your day off the right way because that's how you get people energized, and that's how you get people being productive as well. Yeah. yeah. So go back through that one more time. You said so. You're what you're doing is you're 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 you're. It's essentially like a team huddle, right? You're getting everybody in a room. You're controlling the energy. You're, for the most part, you're controlling the topics by talking about really positive stuff. Like where were your wins? Um, and, and, and essentially, you're, you're creating that culture of, of winning, right? In that, yeah. in that room at that moment, right? And so are you, did you say you're doing that every day or every week or every month? We were doing that Monday, we were doing that Monday through Friday. Okay, so that's yeah. an everyday yeah. thing. Yep. Okay. So you pick that off right away, you go off with some good news, you go through your numbers, any choke points, and most importantly, you want to always reinforce your core values uh, every day if possible. Okay. Yeah. And I love that. That is such golden. I mean, that's a, that's a golden nugget, man. So, and, and, you, and, and by the way, so you have to know your core values if you want to talk them about, about them at your meeting. So that's a, that's a topic for a different show, but hopefully you are dialed into what your core values are. And it's funny that you said that. So before you go on, I was listening to a podcast by my buddy, uh, Lars Hedenborg, who uh, is a KW agent down in North Car Charlotte, North Carolina with uh, Thomas Elrod. And he was saying that your culture equals your core values. In other words, your culture should mirror whatever your core values are. So that the type of culture that you have, you should run them through the filter of your core values before you even bring them in. Do you agree with that statement? Completely agree with it. I've actually got a quote that I wrote down here is when you know yourself, it becomes easier to live a life that's true to your core values. Love so you it. Your company. I love that. I love that line. I had to bring it in today. Yeah, I love that, man. That's golden. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so to touch on some other things that are our key core or sorry, key things to uh, 
uh, building and maintaining uh, a good culture is making sure that you also hire the right people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you definitely only want, want to align yourselves, your team with A players, people that are, you know, want to grow and align with those core values as well. That's all part of the culture. So they all kind of intertwine together. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with that as well? Man, listen, you're speaking my language. Like, and, and for the longest time, we, we hired out of necessity and that was the wrong thing to do. We, and another mistake we made was we hired based on what we thought that individual's potential was. And that was also a mistake. We learn now to hire by track record. And it doesn't necessarily have to be someone's track record in real estate, but usually successful people at some point in life have left behind a track record of success, whether that be in sports and athletics, whether they were, you know, a, a top salesperson for a knife, or, you know, selling knives for Cutco or whatever. But there's usually some path of success that they've left or walked down, right? 100%. Absolutely, man. Um, you definitely want to also make sure that everyone on your team owns something within the company. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be something big, but you want them to feel like they are contributing and make, give them something to own, whether it's training, whether it's culture, whether it's just putting on the music every single morning, mm -hmm. get them to own something. Yeah. That'll, that'll inspire them to, to really join in with that culture. Yeah. And another thing that, that I've found it, that's been very helpful is to look at, so if you, if you run a real estate team or if you're in a brokerage, right, look at the people who, who you like the most, right? Like the, the, the people, the, the, pe the your team members, what you figure out what you love about them and then try to create more people that have the, those types of interests, right? So when you're, when you're bringing people in um, to, to a, like a team, team uh, a real estate team setting and, and you're, you know, you're vetting them to hire them, find out what their likes and interests are and, and see if they're in alignment with, with not only yours, but your other team members, right? Because when you're building a culture, if you, we've all heard the we've all heard the old adage that you know one one bad apple you know spoils the spoils the basket and that is that couldn't be further I mean that couldn't be it couldn't be more true because it's so true yeah and so like have you experienced that too uh, we have I, I have in the past um, we we did have a three interview hiring process that we would really abide by and that actually helped very well in making sure that we hire those eight players talk about um, that man. But it, it is, you know, it's not going to work perfectly every single time. And I, I'm not going to get into that story, but it is very, very true that one bad apple can sour very, very quickly. And, you know, you know the saying, right? It's it's higher, slow, fire, fast. And it's more so just, you know, getting making sure that you're getting that individual out of your culture before they do too much destruction to it. Yeah. So what so what are those those three fundamental things that you do look at before you bring somebody into your environment? Well, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you you speak about what their beliefs are, what they're looking to do, and understand whether or not what their goals are and their growth goals are aligned with what you're trying to uh, achieve as well. Yeah. Um, so you, you want to speak to some re references as well, for sure. That's very important. And even if you think they're the perfect fit, do not skip a step ever. Yeah. You never want to skip a step and follow the process. And finally, you just want to take them out to – uh, a comfortable setting, make them feel very comfortable. You know, you take them out for a beer, take them out for lunch, dinner, whatever that might be, and just see how they react and how they uh, how they are around you in a comfortable setting. Because yeah. then you'll, you'll usually get the true person. You want to make sure that that person, whether or not all their growth, their goals, everything aligned, you still want to make sure that they're going to be a good fit for the team. So make them feel comfortable, make sure they're the right fit. Yeah. I wrote down here having a standard and a process you follow hiring and never and 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 really never not following that, right? It's it's always about the standard, it's always about the process. And 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 if you typically if you follow that with the other people that you've brought in and had success with, you will continue to win in doing that with that formula. Absolutely. And and when you're doing that interview process, grade them. And if they don't fit above your grade level, they're not getting in. And stick to that. Yeah. And another thing that I was reading an article uh, before we got together um, this afternoon on Forbes.com, and it was talking about like the three, kind of the, the the three pillars, I guess, for for you know for culture. 
and it talked about identity, retention, and image. And for identity, it talked about um, culture contributes to identity and the values of your company. And it talked, it, it told a story about prioritizing, um, setting and meeting goals. Um, your individual workers will be more likely to meet goals of their own. And it's a good way to maintain the direction of the company without, um, without, you know, without, without losing sight of what the vision for the company is. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. So it's important to set annual goals, quarterly goals, weekly goals, and you really need to align whatever your annual goals are. And you just need to go back and see what you need to do on a weekly basis. And you need to speak about those goals at a, at a, a weekly meeting every single week with your team and ensure that everything's aligning with what you're trying to accomplish. You need to talk about your goals. You need to write your goals down. You need to have your goals visible at all times on, on some type of a scoreboard, whether or not be, that be on a screen or just written down. And if you're constantly looking at your goals, you have a much higher chance of achieving them. That's for sure. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the, the so like for me, like identity and image are, are really kind of one in the same. But it, it is it, it is important that you know that the people you bring into your organization, when they're not with you, they're representing you um, when you're not there. And so the, the importance, I can't stress enough the importance of hiring uh, the right people who are a cultural fit and not a cultural misfit is is so important for you and your brand. Would you would you agree with that? I'm really glad you brought that up because that what you just said is one of the most important things to me in conducting any type of business or friendship rather. Um, it's about doing what's right and not what's easy, and that's what integrity is. It's doing the right thing when nobody is looking, right? So you are your own brand. However, if you do have team members that are working within your company, you want, you better make sure that, you know, they're doing things the way, the right way. Um, when you're not looking, especially right. that is extremely important to me. I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. And, and also, um, you know, back to retention. So that, that, that retention piece, right. Is, 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 is if you're creating that culture of, of positivity, of winning, of selling, right? Selling um, and, and people hitting and achieving their goals. Um, it's so good for retention, right? Because it's it becomes this symbiotic environment where everyone's kind of feeding off each other, right? Everyone shares their wins, their challenges, uh, how they overcame those challenges. And it just becomes this great like living um, instrument. It's just, it's just really cool to see. And we, we've definitely had our highs and lows uh, at our office, but what is your experience in creating culture and then maintaining your agent base? So there's two things that came to mind when you were just saying that. Um, one is you need to leave your ego at the door. Um, yeah. There's a book called Ego is the Enemy. I highly recommend reading yeah. that. I usually read it about once every three to six months uh, because it's a good reminder. And and it's not because I, I you know, I, I did use that some ego and it's always good to check that at the door. Yeah. Uh, but also too, it's extremely important to be vulnerable. And when you, when you're, when you're comfortable being vulnerable to uh, your boss, to your colleague, to your friend, to your wife, to your kids, that's when life will just open up opportunities for you. And it's very graceful and it's very rewarding when you become vulnerable. So those two things I would highly recommend really getting used to, to doing. Yeah. And I, another thing that I wrote down is that, you know, um, have fun and create contests, do things together outside of work, right? Yeah. Like continue to like, if, if you're truly, if you're building a culture of, of, of winning, of just having fun and, and kind of getting to know and growth, then it's important that you get to know each other outside of the work environment, right? So, and I'm not saying you have to do something with those people every night, but maybe a happy hour once a week or every two weeks, maybe getting together and going to a ball game, right? Getting on a bus and, and, and going to a ball game, just have fun and create contests. Do, are you guys utilizing those types of strategies? We, we, did, we most definitely were. Um, we, we do contests. We post actually that kind of thing, you know, what our goal would be. Whether or not we had a, a quarterly goal, we'd actually post what we wanted to do on the wall. So, again, we could see that every single day and we'd have something to hit. 
Um, you do have a business to run at the end of the day, but it is extremely important to never lose sight of having fun. And that's yeah. why, you know, if you do lose sight of that, you might lose some people. So yes, make sure you're having fun. So one thing I want to bounce back to is you talked about your fear of joining EXP because it's a quote unquote cloud-based company, right? There is no, there's no office per se, although, you know, many of us have offices, but talk about how you, how that was kind of a limiting belief for you and then how you overcame that. So when I first heard about EXP, it would have been probably close to around 18, 18 months ago. And I started to kind of see that shift of a lot of uh, teams and agents, uh, coaches uh, shift into the EXP company. And I'll be very honest, I was a little bit uh, taken off. I, was, I had a little bit of anger. I had a little bit of resentment at the time when that started happening. And I really thought that people were going to lose sight of everything that they had taught us and everything that I believed in, which was that that culture and the training and, and that hands-on face-to-face stuff that you would have within an office. And I, and I got a little concerned, but that was strictly because I just didn't know what I didn't know. I was yeah. very closed minded. So what I will say to that is, is my advice, my biggest advice today would be just be open-minded to opportunities. Um, and so how I overcame that, um, it was not very long ago that I joined this company, but I dove head first. I went, I flew to Orlando by myself. I didn't know a single person uh, except my, my partner, Michael Reese, uh, other individuals there as well. And I was quite honestly blown away. I met individuals like yourself, um, but I just couldn't believe the energy and the culture that this company had created. I did not have any idea that this was out there. Um, but going back to the cloud-based brokers that you speak of, I mean, I was on a, a training session today with 75 other Canadians. We were interacting with each other. We were sharing script work. We were talking about leads. And it was an incredible experience, but that goes on every single day. Tied in with, you know, the Facebook groups that we have, uh, the encouragement, and just everybody really trying to make one big fire mm -hmm. and, and help each other out. I've never seen more assistance and encouragement from people really trying to and a strong desire to help other individuals out within this company. I've never seen anything like it. The culture is, it's mind blowing how incredible it is. Yeah. And, and, and I'm so happy you said that because my, my, I would argue that it is a better culture uh, than I've ever been a part of. Um, it, I would argue it, that as well too. And, and certainly that was never the expectation when we got in. We understood that we, we ultimately would still be building our own culture um, through the team. But Brandon, what happened when we joined, man, was not anything that that I ever even put out there as something that uh, we one of the boxes we would need to check in order to join. But brother, listen, the 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 resources we've been able to tap into. Holy cow. Like. I, I've never we, we never had access to those types of people at Keller Williams. And, and that's and Gary has his top 200 or 100 or whatever that is. And, and that's a group in and of itself. But what's really cool about EXP is like everybody is able to tap into those top 100. Right. And so like you talked about partnering with Michael Reese. Right. And, and, and you know, Jay Kinder and, you know, who was the number two agent in, in the world for Colwell Banker. And the Dan Beers and the, and the uh, Kyle Whistles of the world who, you know, are doing $200 million worth of real estate, the Curtis Johnsons, right? All these people, like we could, we could dial them up at any time and, and ask for advice. And, and we, I've just never had access to that type of, um, that, that type of, um, of, of, of information of, of just pure, like coming from a place of wanting to help you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't agree more to touch on that as well, too. I, I met some other individuals at the conference, Dave DeVoe, and I mean, he has no reason, there will be no benefit of him to help me whatsoever. He was ready to jump on a call right away. I wanted to talk about building a team, the challenges he had, and he said yes right away. And, that, and that's what everybody's doing within this company. You know, it used to be where you'd go to a conference or you'd, you'd ask for information and everybody's trying to hide everything, but 
it's not like that at all anymore. Everybody's just here, take this and grow with this. And everybody's just ready to share all their systems, their tools, um, their ideas together. It's incredible. Yep. And we all know the difference between where you are and where you want to be is what you don't know. It's, it's the, it's the, it's the map or the treasure conundrum, right? What's more important. And ultimately we all, we understand that people that are getting involved understand that the map is what will lead you to the treasure. And so we're trying to get access to that information. And now we were sharing it on a, on a, on a broad scale, right? We're, 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 we are hundreds of us now are sharing information um, at a rate that I've, I've never, like I've never seen before. And so that, that, that continues to be the reason that we grow at the pace we're growing at and, and will be the, the, the reason why you continue to grow at the pace you grow at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what I will say is that one of my, one of the biggest parts of my why is to inspire people, not necessarily real estate agents, but inspire people to make an impactful change in their life usually in a career that will change both their lives and their family's lives. And consistently over my real estate career, at least one person has, has always left their very comfortable, a lot of them six figure jobs to either get into real estate or make a change in their careers. And that's really what I'm here to do. And, and, and showing them and talking about this company is you owe it to yourself to look deep into this company because there is an opportunity here and now to change your life for the better in so many different levels, not just financially, but culturally and, and knowledge based. There's just so much opportunity here. It's neat. Yeah. And you know, one thing that, that I'll end with here is, is that, and we, it's important that you both, both you and I understand this. And then everybody that that's tuning in is that people make decisions based on emotion, not logic. Right. Because if people may if people made decisions based on logic, every real estate agent in in the world would be at EXP. Right. We have we have the best commission split. We have we have opportunities for um, for revenue share. We have opportunities um, to be an owner uh, through stock with the company and other companies just do not offer that. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. My, we, we figured out what my commission split was for the year 2017 or excuse me, 2018, which was last year. And I got paid a hundred and eight percent commission split. Like, and, and so no, I, I can have that argument with anybody. Remax, Keller Williams, uh, the discount brokerage down the street that charges their agent three hundred and forty five dollars a month. Right. I, I get paid more than all of them. And, and so people will start to recognize that. And once they do, because not everybody wants to work for the rest of their lives. You're only as good as your last transaction in real estate. And, you know, once you once that closes, it's what have you done for me lately? Amen to that. So, you know, brother, I know you got a hard stop at 430 because you're jumping on another important call. But is there anything that I, I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, just, yeah, the, I would say that I, I think I kind of hit it on it. So I'll touch it again is that it's, you know, what's the biggest misconception about EXP Realty is that you are not going to we'll, we'll really tie it back around everything we've been talking about is that you're going to lose opportunities in that cultural world, in that training world. But, you know, I've been blown away by the training. There's 20 plus hours of training just ready to add to your calendar every single week. And I mean, these, this training are put on by some of the mega biggest mega agents in the country. Yes. Um, the culture, you know, I guarantee you, if you join or make that crossover that you are probably going to feel more welcome than you ever have in your entire life. And I promise you that will happen. Yeah. Brother that it's been so good to have you on and reconnect with you, man. I, I so enjoy talking to you and it's unfortunate that we have to cut it short at 30 minutes. Um, but I so appreciate you do, taking the time out of your day to be here with us and, and drop some knowledge, man. I appreciate you having me on and, and this isn't going to be the last time and, and we'll see you next week. Absolutely, man. It's always a good time talking to you, Brandon. All you right. just get it, man. And that's why your business continues to grow. As always, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know EXP is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. 
If you want to learn more about why eXp is the fastest growing real estate company in the country, or you're just interested in growing your own business, head on over to explodingwealth.com. Or if you want to jump on a one-on-one -on -one with me and learn more about my business, go to meetmikewall.com. And Brandon, real quick before I let you go, what's a good way for folks to connect with you? Callbrandontown.com. Callbrandontown.com. You heard it. And that's it for this one, folks. See you guys. Boom.